Okay, what we're doing now is an old tactic used by specialists called throw something at the wall till it sticks. starting to melt things over here from like five feet away the jet blast of hot air coming out of that thing is just nuts so next time someone suggests hey just throw something to the wall on the wall till it sticks do not laugh at them That's oh man dude <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what, that was badass. Pardon my French. Uh, I think we might have to mess around with this one a little while, guys. That cranked out 115 decibels. Now, before you snicker or say, you idiot, you're wasting all your process heat on the combustion chamber. This whole chamber could be inserted into the kiln, giving you infrared radiation. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of people don't understand that one of the reasons why a forge works so well when you use the proper refractory is because refractory brick gets red hot and it begins to emit infrared penetrating radiation that is just far better than actual contact with a flame in some instances. I could be wrong. Sometimes that could mess with the metallurgy of what you're doing. I don't know for sure. That could mess some things up. But I can tell you now, if this entire combustor was inserted inside of a kiln and only this part was exposed, the thermal energy coming off of this thing is so intense that I could not get my phone as close to it as I did to do the decibel reading as was done with the other combustor. It was impossible. Um, that infrared radiation was going right through my clothes, through my gloves and everything. So very powerful amount of heat coming off the object itself. Not to mention the plume of superheated gases that were basically melting everything over there. Everything over there is hot to the touch. Um, man, this is something here there's something very interesting going on with this bad boy we do have the convergent divergent nozzle action which i do like 
Um, what, what, what's happening here is we're mixing at high velocity, then we kind of slow it down a little bit for some combustion action, then we speed it back up to ensure maximum intermingling between the oxygen and the fuel. The more eddy currents, the more turbulence, the higher the velocities you have, it's analogous to increasing the surface area of the reaction, enabling optimum combustion by increasing the interaction sites of oxygen connected to fuel and all that jazz. So for the most part, that is why I'm messing with this high velocity stuff is because it increases the surface area almost the way a catalyst works. Um, catalysts aren't consumed in a process, but yet they increase the surface area of reactions and that's why they cause an apparent increase in activity. And similar here, we are not necessarily running off of the mixing so much as benefiting from it. Maybe we are. I don't know. That last phrase was a little speculative, but uh, I'm going to tell you right now, this sucker is a monster. Very interesting. I've had these other nozzles here we were going to test today, but... Uh, after seeing that, do I need to bother? I think we ought to just do some fooling around with this thing for a while. See what we can get it to do. That was at full propane bottle capacity. Um, they sell a 500,000 BTU torch that hooks up to these. And I would imagine the reason that it's rated at that is because that's all a tank will kick off with an ambient temperature of 50 degrees. So you can heat these tanks up. In the winter time, you don't get near the performance out of a tank that you do in the summer. That's why I kind of like some of the, the fact that my hand torch, this here can use diesel fuel, vegetable oil, works best on vegetable oil out of all fuels, I think. But uh, you can use this in the dead of winter, as long as you got dry air, um, and you don't got to worry about your bottle going out on you. I'm pretty sure this thing puts out about 500,000 BTUs also, but it's in a super small flame. So, there you have it. I don't know what to call this thing, man.